2016 ushered in a refreshing start for the fans of the DC Universe. Yes, I'm talking about the Rebirth series. With the Rebirth series, all the heroes that we've known for so long were relaunched in a new light. Major plot points were kept the same, but new characters, both friends and foes, were introduced. All of the monthly superhero comic book titles went through this relaunch, but the one that got quite a bit of attention was the Flash Rebirth. But it wasn't because of Barry. No, no, no. It was because of Godspeed, the mysterious speedster covered in gold and white. The villain showed up out of the blue and the first thing he did was brutally kill a bunch of new speedsters by siphoning their speed force into himself. Why would he do a thing like that? What was his motivation? Well, let's find out together as we dive deep into Godspeed and his godly speed. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. August Hart's journey as Barry Allen's former detective partner. A long, long time ago, there were two brothers, August and George. They both joined the Central City Police Department because they both wanted to help the people and make sure justice was served. Being in the police is not an easy task and both the brothers knew about that. After all, when you're police, you never know when you're gonna run into danger. Or rather, when danger will come running into you. While being in the police force is honorable, it does come with its fair share of pain, especially for the wider family. The grief of losing a family member, especially one who was very dear to him, snuck up on August rather unexpectedly. George was killed when he was on patrol and August felt like he was lost. He asked around and sadly there were no witnesses to this horrific crime. Whatever little evidence he could find, although not much, pointed at one specific man, Billy Parks. Now Billy was a career criminal. He had been involved in quite a few petty crimes over the years and his violent nature was not unknown. August was very confident that the one who murdered his brother was Billy, but he couldn't implicate him. The evidence that he had was not remotely enough to put his brother's killer behind bars. But August had a friend who was very good at seeing things that would usually have been missed by others. He took whatever evidence he could get his hands on, no matter how small it was, and gave it to his good friend, the forensic expert, Barry Allen. Barry promised August that he would work on the pieces of evidence and let him know, but the promise was left unfulfilled. Mere seconds after the promise was made, lightning hits Barry. That night, as August rushed his friend to the hospital, the evidence that may have incriminated his brother's killer was destroyed. This lack of evidence led to Billy Parks walking free and August was heartbroken. He couldn't serve justice and that was a guilt that weighed heavily on him. But unbeknownst to him, a hero was born that night, the one who we know now as Flash, the fastest man alive, who would go on to serve justice in his own way, preventing other people from going through the same grief that August did. Fast forward a few years and August is now a detective. He keeps working with Barry and through their conversations, it's very clear that August had kept his eyes on Billy Parks the whole time. While he never held a grudge against Barry for never going through the evidence, since it was destroyed, August made it very clear that he was not happy with the system. And if he had it his way, Billy Parks would have been dead a long time ago. He just didn't have the power to do anything about it. Whatever Barry said about forgiving and not having a negative bias against Billy went on deaf ears when it came to August. Having Billy walk freely on the streets was something that urged August to be a bit reckless whenever it came to doing the right thing. Sure, that promoted him to a higher post, but at what cost? When a shady organization known as the Black Hole was stealing technology from Star Labs, August was the detective in charge of the case. While handling the evidence, he saw the symbol of the organization, which was very familiar to him. In fact, it was something he'd been obsessed with for a while. The group's symbol was actually near his brother's murder. Seeing that this group could be related to his brother's murder, August became extremely vigilant about the investigation. He wanted to get his hands on one of the operatives so that he could confirm the identity of the killer, which would then help him put Billy Parks behind bars forever. But this obsession led to him blowing his cover when he was having an intense face-off with the operatives. The operatives shot at him, but right before the bullet hit him, August was able to dodge. You see, right as the gun was fired, a speed force storm was created. A bolt of lightning from that storm hit August and that gave him super speed, which effectively slowed down everything around him, giving him time to dodge the bullet and subdue his attackers. The Flash happened to be on site when this all happened. He was about to push August out of the way when August was struck with the lightning. 
Seeing this dire situation, The Flash opted to take August far away from the press, who went far away. As Flash taught August about what he should do now that he was a speeder, August made it clear that he knew who he was. Dropping all pretense, Barry and August started to train together. Barry even opened up to August about his inability to be at two different places at the same time, and that was affecting his life so badly. Having another person who was in the same boat brought the two friends closer together, and soon enough, August became Flash's vigilante partner. August had been rather open about his desire to do what was right and whenever Flash needed some help, August showed up in his makeshift outfit. The partnership was going quite okay, so when a new speed force storm created a bunch of speedsters, Barry wasn't alone in subduing the people who were using the speed force to rob banks. They eventually met Dr. Mina Doan, a speedster who made a training lab where they could effectively train the new speedsters. While Barry spent quite a bit of time with Mina training the speedsters and having a new budding romance, August was balancing his detective work and hero work pretty efficiently. He had closed up five cases while Barry was busy rounding up speedsters. On returning from one such recruitment, Barry came to find August knocked out, surrounded by dead speedsters in Iron Heights, where they had detained the speedster robbers. When August awoke, he explained that he had gone into the detainment area to speak with these speedsters whom they had captured together, and while they were talking, a new speedster dripping in white and gold had shown up. He showed up, siphoned the energy from everyone else, and August had failed to stop him. August didn't remember much more details about the encounter, but what he could remember was that the man's name was Godspeed. Hearing about this, Barry was sure that this was the work of Black Hole, who had been meddling with the Speed Force. When he showed up to their labs, their head, Dr. Carver, showed off a new vest that he'd been working on that would put the Speed Force through him. Before Barry could stop him from activating it, Dr. Carver turned it on. The vest accumulated all the Speed Force around them and turned Dr. Carver into this walking tornado, far too strong for Barry to take on alone. That's when Barry decided to try siphoning the speed from Carver. He asked Mina and August to work around the Tornado Carver and steal his speed force from him by outracing him. The plan worked and Dr. Carver was no longer a tornado. He was barely conscious and was put behind bars. With the supposed god speed behind bars, Barry and Mina started their relationship. Barry was slowly coming back to his normal life as a forensic expert after being a no-show for a few weeks when tragedy struck again. This time, Godspeed attacked the Speedster Training Center and Mina was one of the casualties. Mina was one of the few people whom Barry had gotten close to after years of not letting anyone get near, so her death took a huge toll on him. Barry drowned himself in the case, almost forgetting everything else. Clearly, Godspeed was out there, walking, and everyone who had the speed force was in danger. Barry decided to reach out to Iris West, the journalist who might have information that Barry needed to catch this guy. But what he found was shocking. Now, originally, Godspeed had a pattern. He was going after people who had been hit by the speed force lightning and was stealing their speed force. But his last victim was not a speedster. It was a man with a criminal past. This man was not siphoned out of any speed force. He was just dragged along the ground. And you've guessed it, that victim was Billy Parks. Putting two and two together himself, Barry came to the realization that Godspeed, the villainous speedster that he had been chasing for so long, was none other than his best friend, August Hart. When Barry confronted August, August confirmed his worst fears. He was Godspeed, and he was the one who had been stealing power from everyone. But why would he do such a thing? Well, August thought nobody was using this power anyway. August believed that his gut feeling about Billy being the killer was correct, and he simply took a criminal off the streets. Nothing too crazy. In his eyes, Barry was simply not cutting it. Despite having such powers at his disposal, instead of killing people who had hurt him, Barry was just letting them walk free. This was a foreign concept for August, and he believed that the power he wielded should be used to deliver justice the harshest kind available. After all, with such powers, August was now the judge, the jury, and the executioner. Barry had a hard time believing that August was the culprit because every time Godspeed made an attack, August was with him. Here we learn another shocking revelation. August is so fast that he can be at two separate places at the same time, which is quite cool. In hindsight, it also makes sense why August was able to close five cases and had a much better work and hero life balance in comparison to Barry's. A fight ensues between the two friends. After exchanging a few blows with two Augusts, Barry realised that August's strength was just overwhelming him and he decided to retreat. Once back at the Speedster Lab, Barry decided that he would power up to face off with August. With Kid Flash's help, Barry was able to siphon off the power from the remaining Speedsters. This way, he got to have his power up and all the Speedsters were no longer on Godspeed's hit list. 
Once powered up, Barry faced off against Godspeed, who was on his way to Iron Heights to kill off all the villains. The fight was brutal, but more equally matched in comparison to the previous one. As Barry was being overwhelmed within the fight, Wallace showed up. Kid Flash had been wanting to be a part of the action for a while now, and seeing the Flash in danger, Wally decided to jump in. As Wally too got a power-up as he was part of the siphoning with Barry, both of them were able to subdue Godspeed together. The next time we see Godspeed, he's in Iron Heights as one of the inmates. Owning up to mistakes and turning over a new leaf. Barry visits August in Iron Heights after a little while. He shows up with the shreds of evidence that he could get his hands on regarding George's murder. After processing them, Barry had come to the conclusion that Billy Parks was in fact not the killer. Barry leaves August dumbfounded with the guilt of murdering an innocent man. While there, August had a run-in with the rogues, the costumed criminals of Central City. Captain Cold, their leader, was trying to create a criminal empire, and while doing so, he killed off Turbine, a man who was trapped in the Speed Force for 70 years and got out with the help of Barry. August might be a criminal, but in his heart he was also a detective, and he was interested in the murder of Turbine. There, once he saw Captain Cold use absolute zero energy to gain the upper hand in the fight with Barry, August turned off the machine supplying the energy, helping Barry to defeat him. He confessed that whatever he had done as Godspeed was wrong, and he simply wanted Barry to forgive him. Flesh Family and Godspeed Brainwashed by Grodd Peace is not something that stays long in the life of a superhero. Right after the whole Captain Cold incident was done and dusted, Grodd showed up. Grodd, the telepathic gorilla, he's a formidable force. Desperate to defeat this nasty foe, Barry turned to his once friend August. He freed August from Iron Heights and recruited him into the group. Mina, Barry's girlfriend whom Godspeed had murdered, was now back and she was controlled by Grodd. Godspeed fought with her, surprising pretty much everyone else in the group. However, Grodd's powers were far greater than anticipated and he was soon controlling everyone on Barry's team, including August. But when Barry cut off Grodd's connection to the Speed Force, everyone turned back to normal. August, now back in his normal headspace, decided to disappear into the Speed Force, leaving Barry with the cryptic message that he was right about him. Return of Godspeed A new villain emerged in the central city going by the name Paradox. Iris West, as usual, was working on the case with Barry when Godspeed showed up in her apartment. There he told Barry not to go after Paradox, but refused to explain any more. This led to Barry chasing after Godspeed for answers. This turned out to be an elaborate plan concocted by Paradox and August. Paradox had promised August that in exchange for Barry, he would give August the identity of George's killer. As George's death was August's driving force, he did not hesitate to bring his friend right into the middle of the chaos. Godspeed claimed that although he saw Flash as the hero at first, his opinions of Flash had changed over the years. He felt like Flash could have done a lot more with his powers, which Flash didn't do because of his moral senses. Barry tries to de-escalate the situation, but Godspeed insisted that Paradox, the one who can see the multiverse, had shown him a future that he didn't want to be true. So he had to fight with Barry. But this turned out to be a ruse by Godspeed, and he worked with Barry to defeat Paradox once they were close enough to the man. This was certainly a heartful reunion of two old friends, and it would be awful if something else were to happen to them. The untimely death of Godspeed. As Paradox was quite a strong opponent, Flash teamed up with Reverse Flash to defeat him. Now that Paradox was done for, Godspeed asks Reverse Flash if he knew about George's killer. Reverse Flash kills Godspeed the moment he finishes his question. It turns out George was killed by Reverse Flash, who did all of this to corrupt August. And now that his job was done, he didn't mind killing Godspeed off. He also went on about the future he had seen, where they, Reverse Flash and Godspeed, don't get a place in the Flash Museum that eventually is built. August's death broke Barry apart completely. It fueled him in a way to hunt down Reverse Flash. In a way, the morbid thing that Godspeed said, that Barry needs death to come out of bed, had turned out to be quite true. Barry's rigorous research and investigations were fruitful and eventually he was able to defeat Thawne, aka Reverse Flash, and reset time. Barry visited the completed Flash Museum in the 25th century and saw this time round that there was a monument to his friend, signifying that Godspeed will end up becoming quite famous and eventually immortalised. In the current timeline, we get to see Godspeed's grave blurred out by a bolt of yellow lightning, making it very obvious that Godspeed is out and about, ready to go on new adventures. 
And watch my extension is complete. All will bow before that. From page to screen, Godspeed's live-action debut. With such a smashing introduction in the comics, it would be a cardinal sin in all honesty not to include Godspeed in the titular Arrowverse of CW. In the TV series, his life is a little different from his comic counterpart. August Hart is a scientist from the year 2049. He experimented with tachyons. Tachyons are superluminal particles that give individuals the speed force. The tachyons, in fact, were the stepping stones to create artificial speed force, which as fans of the TV series would know is quite important. Now, once he got the speed from the positive tachyons, August made himself the Godspeed suit. Even though he'd experimented with the tachyons which gave him the speed, August was interested in gaining more. So armed with his Godspeed suit, he started going around stealing the Velocity 9 drug. The Velocity drug line was, as the name suggests, a drug that would help the user tap into the speed force. Velocity 9 was the most recent version of it and August wanted it all. August wanted to make his speed permanent, and that pushed him to steal more and more of these drugs. Nora, better known as XS, got the news about him and showed up to intervene. Inevitably, they engage in combat, and while they fought, Leon Nelson accidentally destroys the drug that Godspeed was after. So after defeating Nora, Godspeed kills Leah. But this action led to his DNA being found on Leah's body, eventually leading to his arrest. However, subsequently, Godspeed travels back in time to get the infinite velocity. In doing so, he split into two factions of Godspeed drones with the actual Godspeed, let's call him Godspeed Prime, losing his memories. The drones fought with each other and ended up causing a Godspeed war. Finally, at one point, Godspeed ended up with the organic speed from the Speed Force. This allowed him to absorb the drones into him, making him whole again. Obviously, this leads to his memories returning and the powers of the drones added to the organic speed, causing quite a power up. He almost becomes a god, but his reign as a god does doesn't last long since Flash and Reverse Flash work together to take him down. This was a brutal fight and once again Godspeed loses his memories. Near the end of the series we see Cobalt Blue aka Eddie Thawne bringing a separate version of him for the final showdown. Here Godspeed faced off against Virtue the Psychic. Godspeed sent all of his clones after her but she was able to subdue each of them rather easily. Eventually Godspeed himself engaged in a battle with her and Virtue was able to defeat him using her psychic ability. The last time we see Godspeed, his speed is siphoned off by Eddie Thawne and he's sent back to his original timeline. Whether he will be returning or not in the future seasons remains quite uncertain. Electrifying Abilities – Godspeed's Superpowers Unveiled one of the coolest powers that Godspeed has is his ability to clone himself using the Speed Force. By diving into the Speed Force, Godspeed clones himself at a moment's notice, which is something even the Flash can't do. Other than this, Godspeed can create vortexes of strong wind by moving his arms at high speed. He can also accelerate his molecules at a much higher level, and that in turn allows him to shift through molecules of other things, including walls. When he shifts through someone else, he raises their molecular vibrations too, allowing him to stick those people into the walls. As he's a speed force conduit, he travels at a speed faster than light. This speed force gives him a friction cover and that helps him not end up on the gruesome end of accidents when he manages to lose his footing while running. His enhanced senses slow down the world around him, allowing him to keep up with his surroundings while he's moving at such a high pace. Godspeed can also interlock his energy currents with anyone who is not bonded with the speed force or negative speed force and drain it from the speedsters. Also, the wicked cool costume that you've seen him wearing, Godspeed created that suit himself. He uses the speed force to create solid energy constructs, which in turn formed his costume. He definitely has taste. Other than all the powers mentioned, he also has superhuman reflexes, superhuman speed, superhuman agility and everything else that Barry had. He's also able to generate and manipulate electrical energy that he's drawn from the speed force, making an encounter with him quite shocking, especially if you're not on his side. Marvelous Verdict Introduced in the same issue of The Flash Rebirth Volume 2, Godspeed quickly won every fan's heart. Giving him the ability to be in two places at the same time was a very interesting decision taken by writer Joshua Williamson. 
The ability of his, along with his mindset, was something that created quite a stark contrast between himself and Barry, which makes their character dynamic very interesting and enjoyable. As fans, we have to say that seeing the two characters bounce off of one another's emotional beats was very enjoyable. As August was Barry's friend, there was a lot of things that August said that were extremely personal. They were low blows, but it also shows how even though they were both on the good side of the law, they acted quite differently once they got their powers. While August was right about Barry seemingly waking up and working hard only when there's death in the picture, I gotta say that August is not much different. The one thing that pushed him to become who he is was his brother's death. His obsession with killing his brother's killer is what makes him so aggressive. It's satisfying that eventually he redeems himself and is immortalized in the Flash Museum. And I'm very curious to see how that plays out in later events. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.